Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the yet another CPL cast and we're gonna start today with week 4 tier 2 match between Pacific Fire and Cheese Police. And I'm Yuround and I'm joined by Darkham. Hello. Hello, hello, good to see you again. It's becoming our weekly Friday CPL cast. Yeah, let me congratulate you with finally joining and leaving uh wait list and joining some team yeah i have my first game tonight that's gonna be fun okay and maybe I, we I will hope... see it some at uh, some cast next week oh, man i hope not <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so you got I pvp am, uh, today right so there PvP. is a chance for you yeah. to learn something for from this cast <laughs> But uh, at first we start with two PVTs, and then we're gonna follow with two mirror matchup, two Brotuses will face each other two times in a row. So yeah. let's start the first game, and I will then tell about the what map there's gonna be. So. The map is in session, and we got MG another two spawning at the left side of the map as a Teal Brothers. And we have statues on the right side of the map in the brown Terran player. Yeah, light brown. Can we change the colors? No, we can. No! <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be Teal versus Brown. Ah, whatever. It seems good enough. So I actually gathered some statistics about those players. Yeah. And what I found is that statues... I mean, first of all, it's week 4, so there were three matches before that, right? But both teams did get one bye at some point of these three weeks. So there were possibility only for two games for both of them. And uh, okay. statues only played once against Zerg and he won. So it won't matter this time. And another two played PvP, but he lost. So he needs this win at whatever cost. Well, I don't know if you remember, but we casted one of those week with uh, Trees Police. So it's the people we casted, I think, um, on uh, week one, we casted them. So those are going to be familiar names. I don't think we casted Pacific Fire Tier 3 yet, so I don't know those guys as much. But uh, I do remember Trees Police. Alright. Maybe you got some notes? <laughs> uh, not on hand. <laughs> I knew that you were gathering some notes, writing down. Yeah, I was watching every single stream of the CPL and I had this big Excel Excel file and I was noting down all the stats and all the openings from everyone. But then I had to go away for a week and uh, because we're not always casting the same tier, I realized that it was just too many players to keep track of. If, uh, if we ever specialize into one specific tier, then uh, I'll try to remember everything because it makes the cast more interesting when... Uh, when you know a bit more about the players and have facts about them and, and know what they played before. But tracking three or four tiers across six teams is, is just a bit too much for me to start with. Yeah, it's too much, but it can be gathered somehow and maybe categorized in Excel sheet format, maybe. Yeah. And what I wanted to okay. say is pretty funny gateway placement behind the gas. It's gonna be pretty far away from the exit of the base. And it's just another situation like in the. I mean, Alaris Rhapsody map, when you don't utilize the uh, uh, room at the choke, you know? You just yeah. place it very far away from the exit so there is not enough space and then. All the building placement is clunky, but it is a bit weird of a 
It's not like sp Fighting Spirit where uh, you have room to, to build stuff. Here it's more like in uh, you're like on the the left side, the left middle side of like this square of of land that you have to build stuff around. So um, for Protoss who likes to you know have their gateway sometimes in the line uh, for for newer players, uh, they tend to build gateways in the line. Uh, might be a bit harder to figure out the placement here, so um, we'll see. We'll see with the next few gateways what what happens with that placement. Yeah, let's see where he's gonna build those gateways more. Okay, uh, so we're having a, an expansion from the Protoss player. At, uh, it's like a twenty-four expand, twenty-five expand. Yeah, and he built three dragoons and then placed down the robotics. So one gate X, three dragoons, blah blah. And uh, the Nexus is gonna be almost at the same time as a command center. And I don't see any upgrades yet for turn. And what is the range upgrade timing? Okay, range is almost finished. And I like that SCV sneak behind those dragoons somehow. Okay, it got spotted. And is it gonna get killed, let's see. Yeah, he's gonna get the most important information for him, he sees the Nexus. Probably he will even see the robotics, not gonna... Uh... I think here the robotics is a more uh, interesting uh, element, yeah. because you would expect the Protoss to have a, a natural by like 28. Yeah, I just didn't expect for SCV to get by those natural choke thin eggs because Protoss usually try to deny that scouting. But this time, the SCV got through and saw everything it needed. So to get... Somehow I can hear myself. Very really weird. Okay, never Check mind. Check if you have the stream open. Yeah, I checked. I do not. Okay, hope it's gonna end soon. Although siege tank went out. Oh. Yeah, we got three siege tanks. Very interesting push here. Gonna kill that single dragoon and then just retreat. Yeah. Protoss is gonna be it... very afraid what that push is gonna happen. Yeah, so you're supposed to have your dragoons kinda camping the uh, natural of the Terran player. That's kinda what you're you want to try and do but uh, what you don't want to do is <laughs> leave that single dragoon out there to, to get killed you gotta be careful oh and another dragoon gonna be picked up oh and even got killed by the mine so yeah. t two dragoon losses is pretty big deal i think here Terran it's a is very just... okay yeah it's a very interesting map uh in terms of uh Terran versus protoss for me because like you can see the Terran base, the way it's placed, it has two entrance towards the natural. So that makes it a bit harder for the like traditional campier dragoons outside the natural. Uh, because uh, you don't really have a good concave. Unless you use this top right uh, ramp, that that's a bit bigger. It's going to be hard to get into position to like camp that natural. So I feel like this map, this map placement, is giving a slight advantage to the Terran. Yeah, maybe. At some games. Let's see what's gonna be this time. I mean, it is easier for Terran to take the third base, maybe. But, uh, as you can see, there is a huge ram there at the Third, like natural third base for every spawning location so Terra needs to build a lot of buildings just to block Protoss attack and is the siege mode finished? no, he just went straight to the vulture upgrades before siege mode oh. yeah, yeah, we're seeing a lot of tanks before that siege mode yeah, okay, look, look at how vulnerable here. this base is for Protoss it's yeah. wide open and closer to the center, so Terran can just decide to move out at any moment. Oh, 
Those Dragoon are gonna get trapped by those mines, I think. Yeah, at least one Dragoon got killed, okay. Yeah, losing many Dragoons to, to mines this so far. Oh, and Terran oh, okay. is moving out, but he forgot one tank and vultures. We're seeing observers on the on uh, another two side, so... Yeah, observers is were out you know, a long time ago. It, it, they're already at Terran's base, watching how many factors there are. Okay, Terran managed to move across the map and establish position on this center high ground. So this base is... I think it's not gonna get saved. But Protoss is gonna try to save it. He has... He doesn't have speed upgrade yet for Zealots and there's very low amounts of Dragoons here. Yeah, there's no way Protoss can engage here. He should have just left those Dragoons near the Nexus and hauled off those Vultures. But he just decided to give everything away. So Terran is yeah. now ahead in supply and there's no way for Protoss to... yeah. There's nothing, yeah. Once you lose all your Dragoons, as in a PvT, you're in a very bad spot. So, this is what we get in the first game. A win by statues. First win versus Terran this league, you said? He won two times against uh, Zerg? No, statues won once time against Zerg. Right. Okay, let's proceed to the second game. Yeah, Statues has shown himself as a very solid player this time. I think I have casted him and I think, yeah, he, 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 he's a very good turn player with a great potential and talent. Okay, you can join. Let's go. And we have Polaris for game two. Right, so another two has spawned as a Till Protoss again at the top left corner of the map. And we got statues as the Terran in the yellow bottom corner. Great, so I fixed the score yeah very convincing victory for statues there protoss maybe he didn't know this map pretty well and i see that he doesn't manage his probe very well you see you need to at the first few minutes you need to send those probes at the free batch of minerals no the three closest one no 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 Whatever is free. Yeah. Yeah, so that probe won't interrupt with each other. So there's won't be a possibility that probe just stands there and waits for another probe to leave. You know? Yeah, I I I saw that. I read about that and uh it is something you should try and do. Um I don't know. If you're in a tier three, maybe it's not the biggest focus. It's not the biggest focus, but it's something you can think about the first minutes yeah. at least. And you don't have And much it else. does matter, Zoe. <laughs> yeah. And as I was saying at the first game, this time again, I don't know what what's wrong with those players, but uh, there's another very far away gateway. In Polaris Rhapsody, there is a huge space here. Where you can that you can use to build gateways and production buildings, and a lot of players just don't use that and make them as closer to the nexus as possible. I mean, yeah, the maybe, town hall. Maybe, tr maybe trying to like use the same pylon to put in tech buildings or something. Oh, that core placement is, uh, yeah, oh, those, those <laughs> gas probes are, are 
having to go all around the Oh my. The that's oh, a, shit. That's a, yeah. yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking, to... exactly. <laughs> you maybe should consider the cancelling the cybernetic score. Yeah, usually if you want to build your uh, buildings close to the uh, gas building, yeah, so you should build it to the left side of, the, of it, not to the right side. Right side is gonna, is it is where probes leaving the building. Okay, so first zealot is already across the map and attacking the... T oh, what I was saying, it's just a CV there. I just thought that top left is Terran base. Never mind. I still can heal myself. Left, like... <laughs> oh. Yeah. Maybe it's you, I don't know. So that zealot decided to just stay there. I think it could have potentially maybe harass Terran a little bit. And second zealot is staying there as well. Why do you build zealot if you don't use them? I was gonna say that cybernetic core placement <laughs> is better than before, but I don't think it's ideal. Yeah, because you need to build gateways closer to each other and yeah. cybernetic core just takes that place. If you're trying to have as many gateways in a single screen that you can so that it's uh, later in the game it's a bit easier to build stuff. You don't have to... When you stop using your macros, your, your F2, F3, F4... Um, I know macro has a different meaning in this game, but... Yeah, when you stop using the, the key binds, you know, you want to have all your gateways in a spot and all your tech building in another spot. Right. So we actually have the repetition of the first game, I see. Maybe less zealots than the first game, but still. In terms of uh, build, yeah, it's very similar. It's similar because... Uh, First game there were three dragoons, uh, kinda, kinda pressuring Terran, but not attacking the bunker, which they should have. Yeah. So th that allowed Protoss to get Nexus slightly faster than the first game, and he even skipped the range. Only now researching it, and we see Terran is. Just as the, as the, in the first game, building mine upgrade, and there's still only one siege tank. Okay. Another two here is uh, letting go of that vulture, choosing not to pursue, which is, which is a good call to make. But for me, it's always. <laughs> Always hard to not try and hunt down vultures. Yeah, smart decision to send those vultures uh, this, to the sides of the map, not at the small bridges. Because if Protoss has his units there, oh, and very open natural here, those dragoons were not in time to stop those vultures. And even lost two dragoons, and now his probes are under attack. Yeah, he's gonna lose a lot of probes here, and there's no units in productions yet. Oh, and he's just gonna GG. Yeah, that is the shortest series yet, I think. Yeah, and I get it. That's uh, that's something that happened to me a few times, where uh, the vultures will will sneak in. The Protoss base, and uh, you kind of lose hope. You 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 see the snowball, and uh, you you know you think that you'll you won't be able to recover, and uh, it's just those critical mistakes, and then uh, give up on the game. Yeah, I can get that as well. So now we're gonna have another TVP between Archimedes and Heavier. <laughs> Yeah, so a first win for Cheese Police by can join. By the way. Yeah. So Cheese Police starting strong. I 
think that's my team too. I think I'm in G6. Exactly. <laughs> so you can follow what's happening here. Okay, so we can change the colors and announce the players because we have heavier spawning at the 12 o'clock as a uh, red Terran. And we have arcane winds in the orange bottom left corner. For me, it's a blue. The... Oh, okay, let me switch. Blue arcane wind in the bottom left corner playing as Protoss. So, yet another PvT game. Yeah. I'm gonna... My favorite, favorite matchup. Have you win any? No, but it's the one I studied the most. Okay, and what have you studied then? Mostly the build order, the strategy. All my core understanding of Protoss comes from uh, PvT. Okay, but you All right. gotta focus on PvP today. Since yep. your opponent is Protoss. Yeah. Let's see, this, this Ascension map is very interesting to me. I, I really don't like the way the natural is uh, has two entrants and the chokes are a bit weird around the, the main base and the, the choke around the secondary base. It, it's really interesting. It's a... Uh, different from the kind of maps like Fighting Spirit, Polaris, Eclipse. It's very different um, to me. So at my level, at a T3 level, hmm. as a Protoss player, you know, not be able to simply camp my forces next to the natural of, uh, of the Terran player um, is a bit trickier. Because you're trying, as a Protoss, right, in PvT, you're trying to prevent them or catch them moving out. And that's when you're, you're trying to hit. And if they have two exits, well, that makes it, you know, you have to make more decisions. You, they might use the, the other exit if you camp only one, but then if you camp both of them, uh, you're splitting your forces. So that can lead to some interesting gameplay. Yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> and Havier... I, I played... Is, what? Yeah, I was going to say Havier gets lucky with the scouting. He's going to find the Protoss base first. Yeah, but usually it won't matter. But, uh, and in this game as well. But still, yeah. So... So do you think this map is favored for... Terran then right because of those high ground and narrow chokes and all you know it, it might depend on the skill levels of the player maybe a high level player will say that it doesn't matter or maybe it matters even more I wouldn't know but uh, for me yeah I would say that the map favors uh, Terran not, you know, not like favors it, like it's not, I don't think it's that biased, but <laughs> it, 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 it has room for interesting uh, plays for it, Terran. Yeah, for example, as we see this game, Terran decided to go to factories, and Protoss actually managed to scout that, because there was only one Marine at the choke there. So let's see what the response is going to be. So Arcane Winds is going to just skip the Nexus for now. And add second gateway and robotics, which is probably fine. He need to get prepared to that push and send all of his units closer to the Terran base just to be, just to get some information about when Terran is gonna move out. And yeah. and uh, yeah, and be prepared for that. We got. Vulture per mine being researched, Dragoon range, of course. And uh, Protoss should start thinking about making uh, a natural. No, he will lose it for sure now. He needs to get those units as soon as possible. Now he managed to micro some, and 
yeah, Terran is gonna struggle to move across this narrow choke here. Yeah, those free SCV are doing a great job. Look at how they're trying to sur surround the Protoss and Protoss is even moving the another way just to pull those units to the wrong side of the map. But there is now too many Dragoons. You see there's three here yeah. all damaged and two more fresh Dragoons gonna focus the siege tank and this push yes. has failed for now. Yeah, siege tank. Uh... And got intercept and then cleaning up. Yeah, but control there for heavier. He didn't place the mines since Protoss doesn't even have observer observatory, so those mines could have deal a lot of damage. Like you can see now, yeah, those yeah. mines are just oh. incredible units. Yeah, all those dragoons go down. Yeah, that's what he should have done in the first place. That siege tank, it is just a distraction. And, uh, the real MVPs are the vultures with those free spider mines. Absolutely. The, yeah, each mine is just whooping 125 damage. Yeah, and when they connect, boy. So we got a, a failed push by uh, Havier and then uh, did good damage to arcane winds so you know he wasn't able to counterattack all that much so now we're we're moving on to the next uh yeah funny know, fun, funny wins. how arcane winds just anticipates Terran to uh give up on this on ending the game fast so just expands himself and yeah Terran just decided to do the same Okay, interesting that he decided to reposition the factory. Didn't build them closer to each other at the first place. Yeah, so yeah. now observers are out, so... Protoss is not gonna be contained anymore, if you can call that contained. Of course, a single miner. Or scared, yeah. We do have some mines on the, on the left side of the map. Yeah, which are so, still uh, doing damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One, one mine did explode there. So uh, maybe you're trying, trying to see what's going to happen on the left. The problem is Terran doesn't have siege mode yet, but I don't think Protoss is going to commit to attacking. He just doesn't know what's going on for Terran, since he didn't send any observer to his base. Actually, there is no engineering way for Terran. So Heavier decided to skip Academy and Engineering Bay, just uh, defending with mines. Yeah, I mean and we're starting to see Reavers on the Arcane Wind side, so there's a good uh, opportunity here for for drops. There won't be any turrets. Hey Javier, glad you're here, you can elaborate on your decision or something. <laughs> Explain us how your game went. And weren't you afraid of DTs or... Yes, since you don't have Engineering Bay and Academy yet. Usually I have either of that stuff just to stop Invisible Man to ravaging at my main. So now Arcane knows that uh, Siege Mode is completed and uh, we're back in a more standard game. So Observer is finally in, scouting there, watching what's going on. Yeah, Seize. and he's probably mm -hmm. thinking that, hey, there's no, there's no turret, now would be a good time, <laughs> an engineering bay just finished. Nah, he just wants to drop river somewhere. And yeah. that's another point, what you're saying, that there's no turret yet. But that observer, if Terran sees that there's something cloaking, flying 
somewhere at his main this will just uh, make him build some turrets which will mm, some some action going on at the six o'clock there few vultures ran by focus probe and but dragoons were on time and that shuttle is on the way on the right side yeah nice path there so he knew that there's no tourists there but immediately turrets were placed maybe he did so it with the observers who decided to move it oh no that shuttle will it make it oh it's spotted now but rivers are yeah. dropped river dropped but they're stuck in there it's gonna be a fight to the death taking down those scvs wow 15 kills already and uh and killing even more how do you are you gonna deal with those so Terran moved out at, to the closer to the center to take his turret but yeah those siege tanks are far away but single siege tank is managing to clear one river and probably he's gonna kill another one. Oh, never mind there's another siege tank there yeah and he's sending even more back to his main what's going on with those dragoons <laughs> hero scout dragoons yeah realizes that oh hey look there's an army <laughs> <laughs> Those are going to run into turns natural, like suiciding there, you know, for the good of Protoss race. Another Dragoon is going in. What's happening here? Could be a bad rally point. No, the, he was with the all of his brothers there, staying in the, in the group, and then decided just to move in. <laughs> yeah. And so. here, and I don't.